Beef farming is often seen as the poor relation of dairy in this country. But imagine for a second you were starting with a blank canvas. You had a conviction that there was a profit to be made and you had a proven track record of making a lot of money. What would your beef farm look like then? It would look like this. Frank Murphy has made a lot of money through his financial services company, Monex. But farming has always been his great passion. Frank, how's it going? Good, Darren. Good to have you here. Nice to meet you. What a setup. Uh, you're not a farmer by profession. And I'm just wondering, is this a hobby that's got out of control? Not at all. Well, I was always a farmer. You know, my, in my younger days, uh, my dad was farmer of uh, where Kevin Dundon is now, Dunbrody Park. He managed 550 acres there, and that's where I actually grew up. So my first love was actually farming, right. but we didn't own the land and we didn't own a farm. So I was sort of uh, sent on my way, ended up doing a BCom down in UCC, finally became an accountant and the rest is history. Then in 2012, Frank and his wife, Teresa, inherited her family farm at Glen South, about 20 kilometers from Mallow in North Cork. A decision about what to do with the farm had to be made. It was either sell or do something with it. So I bought a few animals just to see how it goes. And then once I did that, there was no holding back. It's just something that I always wanted to do. I mean, I always maintained uh, an interest in farming with my father-in-law. Also, I suppose what happened as well, my wife got sick for quite a, a period of time. So I had to stay home as well. So all of a sudden time became available and this is the end product. But for Teresa, it was far from easy in the beginning to see the old farm being transformed into the ultra modern facility that it is now. It was quite um, emotional really for me and for my mum to see that like all the, you know, the, the existing buildings like were literally being like demolished in front of our eyes. Um, the original family home like of my grandfather was actually part of the building so it was really very emotional but then once we knew that that had to happen I suppose it was a case of move on and you know see what happens next and then I suppose it all kind of evolved in front of our eyes over a period of maybe six to nine months. I'm happy with it now like it's um, it's good and I'm very proud of it and I think really my, my dad would be extremely proud of it as well I think at, at, at this stage. 1,500 cattle pass through here every year. They're mainly fed forage crops like maize, beet and winter barley, which was being planted on the day that I visited back in September. But it's not just the scale of the operation that makes Glen South Farm stand out from the crowd. I'm different to most farmers in that I want to utilise the assets that we actually have 12 months of the year. We do graze animals, we have 100 acres around us here, but the whole objective is to buy in animals ready for finishing in the factories, in the processors, or in the butcher market, and we bring them in and we keep utilizing our complex up here the full year. The whole complex is actually open. I just wanted the, uh, the throughput of air to actually maintain what it's like actually at grazing and out grazing fields and so on, and that's actually worked quite well. Another thing that makes Frank different from many other beef farmers is that his enterprise actually makes money and without dipping into a single farm payment. How is it that you, an accountant, is able to make a profit out of beef farm and you're only at it three years when there's guys who spend a whole lifetime at it and they seem to be eating into their single farm payments to keep yeah. themselves afloat? Which is the problem. I was warned about that when I started as well. And a bit like you, everybody thought I was mad. But I said, no, it does actually make sense on a volume basis. First of all, you're going to be a lot more efficient. Everything is pitted here. The actual cost of the feeds are actually quite low. We don't go for the high concentrate that some uh, beef finishers actually go for. It's actually very, very low. We're just on maize and whole crop. We don't do silage. We did try that before and uh, we won't have it anymore. No, so no grass silage? No grass silage at all. We graze our animals outside, there's no problem with that. But when it comes into performance and type of meat that we're actually trying to achieve, they perform an awful lot healthier than what you see in front of you here. Cattle dealer Jerry Murphy not only supplies Frank with cattle, but also buys back the finished animals for the factory. It's unusual in that you can come any week and that there's always cattle ready for slaughter. And they're the correct age, you're guaranteed their quality assured. We know the day they come in because the systems that are in place here. So any day you come in the gate here, you're guaranteed that there's a load of, of what we call perfect cattle. And, and like most farms are like that, but you can come here any day you, you want and you know there's nothing going to be out of place or nothing wrong. 
But it's not just the factories that Fang supplies. Award-winning butchers Jack and Tim McCarthy also come to him for their meat. When you come with Frank, you lay out your products you want. You want traditionally it's an Angus or Hereford heifer, between 400 and 450 kilos, grass-fed. So you know the age, you know the breeding, you know the feeding. The husbandry is um, second to none. So you, 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 your products come like peas in a pod, absolute superb cattle. How do you know which one is for you or what makes you happy about what you see in there? Yeah, well, it's very easy to see what you want. I mean, they'll stick out a mile. Um, that's where the dealing comes. You know what you want, you know, and the handling. I mean, we buy cattle by hand. You run your hand over the backs of the cattle? It's a traditional way of buying the cattle. You can have, um, you can have uh, scales and you can have grids and you can have everything. But the traditional butcher's way of buying the cattle is buying them by hand. For this operation to run as smoothly as it does, it needs the help of a rather unusual lady. This is uh, Maria. This is Maria. This is her. The beauty about it is it costs about five euros a day to actually run. She's all electric. She has three wheels underneath her. That's her skirt around her. Okay. And that skirt actually pushes the feet in as she goes around each time. She's also actually measuring as well. That there, I don't know if you can pick that up there, the red dot. Okay. That's how she's actually going to measure the feed as she goes around. Literally kind of infrared dot infrared on the ground dot, or laser absolutely. dot or whatever on the ground. Correct. This allows Maria to calculate where feed is needed and how much. But advanced technology like this comes at a price. It's the first time it's ever been used for beef any place in the world. In the world? In the world. Wow. She retails at 140,000 to 150,000. Okay, so we're not talking small money, but Presumably you're talking about savings in labour or Well, she takes, she takes away the tractor, she takes away the dive feeder. The beauty about her, of course, is she is checking the animals every half an hour for feed. And once you have your kitchen full, and this kitchen is sized for three days, so once you finish uh, on a Friday evening, you're going to be okay until Monday morning. As far as Frank is concerned, operations on this scale represent the future for beef in Ireland. Is it the only way to do it? In, with our system, yes. It does make sense. You can actually make money from it. So you do need, I think, I believe in beef, you need quite a large scale of animals to actually make sense. Next week on Ear to the Ground, the cost of carbon, growing hops in County Wicklow. All these plants here are females. It's a bit like the bees. Um, the males are probably not much use. It's all females. Totally redundant. Yeah. And Dara's Dairy Diary. This is what our cows are going to be surviving on for the winter and so important for their health that we have good stuff in the pit. So 